GoPro's smallest camera ever, the Hero 4 Session, breaks out of the normal GoPro menu system most will have become accustomed to, and introduces a new, simpler way of using a GoPro. For those who want to grasp the basics and get started with their new Hero 4 Session, but are like me and never bother with the manuals, this guide is all you need. The packaging itself is rather straightforward to get into and removing the sealing tape releases the top plastic lid, which provides a great storage container for storing some of the GoPro mounts and accessories you'll no doubt accumulate. Removing the camera unit itself from its base, or any quick release mount for that matter, is simple and forms the basis of GoPro's quick release mounting system. Just squeeze the two ends at the rear of the clip together and push forward. Reverse the process to lock the quick release buckle back into any quick release mount. Thumb screws are used to mount the camera or different mounts together. This can be unscrewed to remove the camera from the quick release buckle altogether. Bear in mind the small plastic piece labelled remove is for packaging purposes only and can be discarded. The GoPro Session mounting ecosystem is made up of these quick release buckles and mounts which snap into each other. You'll find two of these adhesive mounts in the package, one for flat surfaces and one for slightly curved surfaces such as helmets. The two additional quick release buckles included within the package, one having an integrated ball joint mechanism for quick and easy camera positioning, have integrated rubber plugs. When attaching or removing these, pull the rubber plug upward so that the rear fins can flex and enter or exit the mount. Once in place, push the rubber plug down to lock the mount into place, as well as eliminate any vibration. When using standard quick release buckles, the included white rubber plug will do the same job. When mounting the camera itself, the tighter the thumb screw, the more rigid the overall structure, so use either a screwdriver or a wrench, such as the GoPro Tool accessory, for that additional turn. A final note on the packaging, use a sharp knife to cut through the foam adhesive at each corner between the plastic base and the cardboard box beneath. This releases the base, which can now be used to mount your camera securely onto any flat surface as a makeshift tripod. Unlike other GoPros, the Session does not come with a waterproof housing since it's already waterproof without the need for any additional case. Instead, it's supplied with two frame mounts, providing the ability to attach the camera to a huge range of GoPro mounts and accessories currently on the market. Opening the mount to remove the camera is easy, thanks to a simple clip on the top corner. Releasing this allows the camera to slide out of the mount from the front only and due to the square design it can be reorientated and fed straight back into the mount. Both supplied frame mounts use the same mounting concept, the only difference between the two is the actual GoPro mounting point, one mounts from the bottom, while the other mounts from the rear. This is especially useful for times when lower profile mounting is required, perfect for getting the camera into those really tight spaces. As the camera itself is waterproof, meaning no other housings are required, always remember to use fresh water to give the unit a rinse after it's been in any salt or seawater to avoid any damage caused by the salty water. Charging the battery is a simple matter of sliding a latch on the right side of the camera to release the side door and reveal its connectivity ports. Attach the micro USB cable included in the package to the micro USB port on the camera, and the USB end either into your computer or to a compatible adapter such as this iPhone adapter that I use here. The camera LED will light red to indicate it's charging and will switch off once fully charged. Next we want to insert a memory card. There's a compatible list on the GoPro site with the two most recommended being the Lexar 633X or the SanDisk Extreme, either in a 32GB or 64GB capacity. Avoid the SanDisk Ultra or any lower class card at all costs. Nevertheless, with the side door open, the memory card slides and clicks into place. Otherwise, the session is refreshingly simple to use. Press the main button once and around 4 seconds later the camera is on and recording. Press the same button again and 7 beeps tell you it's turned off. Alternatively, a 3 second button press starts image capture in time lapse mode. Users can take single shots too, but the GoPro app will be needed for that. Again, another press stops capture and switches the unit off. 
great for preserving battery life while making the session the easiest camera to use in the GoPro range. And that's all there really is to it. Although the camera has a smaller display, which is now a strip of basic information, it displays some useful information while video or time-lapse capture is in progress. Upon pressing the shutter button to stop recording, a number is displayed showing how many recorded clips are currently on the memory card. When it comes to changing settings, it's not so simple. The only other button on the device is found on the rear. Pressed once, it shows a status update on the camera shooting settings as well as the time remaining on the memory card if recording with the current chosen settings. Toggling further through this menu will provide the ability to enter a settings menu. Just like any other GoPro, the rear button moves between options and the top shutter button selects and changes options. Here we can change the video resolution, as well as frame rates and field of view settings. The same is true with the time lapse settings where users can change resolutions and the time between shots. Note that if you do not see this settings menu on your camera, you'll need to update the camera's firmware. Although there are several ways to update the firmware, I still prefer the manual method of downloading the firmware from GoPro's website, placing it onto the memory card, and letting the camera do its thing. The session will automatically detect the update and power up to apply it in a few minutes, bringing the camera up to date along with that all-important settings menu. Controls on the camera are extremely limited. As a result, with the Hero 4 session, users will be getting very familiar with GoPro's mobile app. To do this, we need to enable the Wi-Fi on the session by selecting it in the appropriate settings menu. A blue flashing LED indicates Wi-Fi is now active. Pairing the unit up with a smartphone is as simple as always, and is no different from any other wireless-enabled GoPro camera. Simply follow the on-screen instructions and the GoPro is connected in no time. Once connected, the app opens up a whole new range of possibilities. There's the obvious settings to tweak like resolution, frame rate and megapixels. Protune also lets you tinker with ISO and sharpness settings, albeit in a limited way, while the photos and multi-shot settings allow you to change the resolution and time intervals of photos. Users can also use the app as a remote control, getting the Hero 4 session to start recording when it's out of easy reach. Finally, users have the ability to view all the content from the session directly on the phone or tablet. All pretty standard GoPro stuff. You can also pair a wireless smart remote in the same way, providing the ability to remotely start and stop video capture when at a distance, as well as taking single images with relative simplicity. A quick note with regards to the LED indicators. An indicator on the front and one on the rear flashes red when image or video capture is in progress. A flashing blue indicator shows whether the camera's built-in wireless is on. Note that the wireless can be switched on and active even if the camera itself is switched off. If you ever forget your wireless password, keeping the status button pressed for 7 seconds will allow you to reset all wireless settings. Viewing your captured video or images is a simple task and users have several options on how to proceed. Of course, when connected to the GoPro app, users are able to view back captured content on the fly. When back at your desk though, connect the included mini USB cable to the side of the camera and the other end to your computer. The camera battery will begin charging as you access and view your content. Alternatively, users are able to use a USB card reader or SD card adapter to read the memory card when connected to your computer, removing the need to connect the camera altogether. At this point, you should be relatively comfortable in getting started with your GoPro Hero 4 session camera. It is GoPro's simplest camera after all, so it doesn't take much to get up and running. Remember to check out all the other GoPro tips and tricks and review videos on the channel to give you a greater insight into how versatile this tiny camera is, and for extra help when choosing the right accessories and settings for different shooting scenarios.